For many years, modularizing one's JavaScript code was a huge pain in the ass. There were various approaches one could take, including using Perl scripts to concatenate multiple individual JS files into a single big file, or writing your code as a plugin for jQuery, or just including a bunch of files with script tags and allowing them to talk to each other via global variables, which is a terrible idea for a lot of reasons, so please don't do that. Solutions such as CommonJS, still heavily used in node development, and Require.js, a library that works similarly to CommonJS but uses the AMD or Asynchronous Module Definition spec for improved performance, helped a lot. But they either only worked in specialized environments or required a third-party library to work in the browser. ES2015 introduced a solution that's built into the language itself, import and export. These two little commands end up being supremely useful, especially if you're working a lot in the NPM ecosystem, which you probably are if you use Node.js, React, Angular, or Vue. At their core, import and export are pretty straightforward. You can export values, functions, or classes from one file for use in another. Here's a simple two-file example. We'll start with helpers.js. Save that, switch to main.js, and import our function like this. Save that. However, if you build these files and just try to run them in your browser, you're going to have a bad time. Why? Because you'll run into a cores error prohibiting you from loading modules directly from the file system. You need to be running them from an actual web server, which is why I've set up a simple express server here to work with. If you want to see this code running, just clone the repo, cd to this lesson's directory, and then type npm install and npm start to run the web server. That'll allow you to see this. As you can see, we've imported our function and it works properly. Let's talk about other ways import and export can work. For starters, you can import a whole file like this. That's pulling in the entire file and assigning it to the baby's object. Be aware, however, that this will also execute any code that is executable in this file. Works kind of like a script tag in HTML. So if your babies.js file starts with console log, I like to punch babies, please note, I do not like to punch babies, and you save this file and import it, your console is going to tell the whole world all about your baby punching habit. Not so good. Or perhaps great if that's the kind of thing you're proud of. Any functions that were included in babies.js would be accessible as methods on the babies object. So babies.punch, babies.feed, etc. Export also allows us to set a default. This can be useful if your file is mainly one large class, as is often the case in React development, but also has a few miscellaneous exports that aren't always needed. Let's add more code to helpers.js, like this. Note that we're not giving this function a name. That's because it's the default, and we're going to name it when we import it, like this. Save the file, switch over to main, and then use it like this. And this should shout our names. And it does. Note that we do not have curly braces around shout names when importing it. That's because we're importing the default export. The curly braces are only used for non-defaults because they're quietly using our old friend variable destructuring, which we covered in JS Quick Hits number five. Speaking of which, let's add another export to helpers.js. This time let's do a variable instead of a function. At the bottom of the file, we'll add this. Save that, head back to main.js, and we can adjust the first line, which currently looks like this, to this. Now we have access to both of those variables thanks to destructuring. So down at the bottom of the file, let's console log our latest list of dinosaur rockers like this. That should give us an array. And it does. 
The last thing we need to cover is aliases. Let's say you want to import a function, but you don't want to use that function's name in your own code, perhaps because it conflicts with another function you imported from a different file or library. That's a bummer, but the folks behind ES2015 have got you covered. In fact, we already used an alias up above in conjunction with that asterisk. But there's no reason you can't use them in other examples either, like this. I'm just going to put a bunch in here and not actually use them. Here's a default alias. Here's a destructured alias. Here's destructuring with one alias and one not. And a default with an alias, and a destructured with an alias, and a destructured without an alias. One final thing to note. While you can use imports at load time like we're doing here, I don't recommend it for large projects, as it's not the most optimized way to do things. Get a bundler like Gulp or Webpack instead and let it crunch you up a single minified JS file from all the different files you've produced. Curious how you'd do something like that? You might want to check out my 5-minute React course. ES2015's import and export commands are really handy, especially when building complex web apps with lots of moving parts. Even if you're writing a relatively simple site and want to stick with vanilla JS, they can still facilitate clean code separation, which makes things a lot easier to read. See you next week.